When my buddies ask me about a newer round, I try to break it down for them really simply in terms I know that I would understand and that they'll understand. What is 6.5 PRC? It's like 6.5 Creedmoor went to the gym for years on test and became 6.5 PRC. So what's 6 arc? 6 arc is what 224 Valkyrie and 6.5 Grendel want to be when they grow up. So what is 8.6 Blackout? Well, if you are 300 Blackout, 8.6 Blackout is the guy she told you not to worry about. In case you haven't heard of 8.6 Blackout before, it was developed by the same people who developed 300 Blackout with some similar ideas. They wanted something bigger and more powerful than 300 Blackout, they wanted to maintain magazine capacity, and they wanted platforms to be able to adopt the new cartridge with only a barrel swap while optimizing the round for shorter barrels and making subsonic offerings with suppressor use a priority. We have a whole video on exactly what 8.6 Blackout is, and I'll link that in the description. This video is specifically about different barrel lengths and their effect on the velocity of the projectiles. One thing that has been assumed with 8.6 Blackout is that the ammo is very barrel length sensitive. Basically what I mean by that is the ammo more or less has to be tailored to your barrel length. With three common barrel lengths, 8, 12, and 16 inches, many companies have specific loadings for each length. Well, I got to wondering what is the actual effect on velocity if we take a loading for a 12 inch barrel and see what happens to that velocity when we shoot it across all the different barrel lengths. So we've got three guns with three different barrel lengths. And I know in a perfect world we'd have three of the same guns with three of the same barrels with three different barrel lengths, but I think this would be enough to get a general idea on the velocities across the three barrel lengths and while I definitely can't guarantee your results will be the same, hopefully we can use this test as a general guideline for what you can expect in the velocities. Our test ammo will be Callaway Ballistics 285 grain loading of 8.6 Blackout, and this is designed to work in a 12 inch barrel, so it will be interesting to see how it does in the other two lengths, 8 and 16 inches. This is new brass and using the Hornady 285 grain ELD projectile. This is a very good loading and what I use in most of my shooting. All rounds are loaded by hand and each round is individually gauged on a Sherman gauge for optimum quality 8.6 blackout. To get our velocities, we will be using the Garmin Zero C1 Pro Chronograph, and I never thought I could be so excited about a chronograph. This thing is so compact that you can actually mount it on the rifle. That's right, weapon mounted chronograph. The battery life is good, it picks up every shot, has no problem reading subs. Basically anything that has ever bothered you about any other chronograph you may have used has been fixed with this unit. If you want to see a full video on it, let me know in the comments section. I kind of want to make one, but not sure that there are many ballistic nerds like me out there in the audience. The silencer we are using on everything across the board to keep everything the same is the Diligent Defense DTF-L. This is an absolutely solid offering if you're looking for a quality can for 8.6 Blackout. I like that it's crazy quiet on 8.6, but also has hub mounting in the back so you're not limited to any thread pattern or any specific mounting system. It also allows it to adapt to many other calibers as well and does a really good job across the board. We're going to start with a 12 inch barrel to get the baseline and what the ammo is designed to run in. Our 12 inch gun for this test is the Q-Fix N86. If you're not familiar with the Fix, it's a very impressive bolt action rifle, extremely lightweight at only 5.4 pounds, very compact, uses standard AR-10 magazines, really short bolt throw, modular customizable design, folding fully adjustable stock, the list just goes on and on. Basically an all around very cool bolt gun and even cooler in 8.6 Blackout. For complete transparency, I want everyone to know that one purge shot was taken before the chronograph was turned on. What that does is that one shot purges the rifle and suppressor of natural gases and allows for more consistent and accurate testing. It's not as noticeable on supersonics, but it is very noticeable on subsonics. And this one shot was taken before testing on all the rifles. 
Okay, so here's the data that we got. We have an average velocity of 1,022 feet per second with a standard deviation of 7.5. And that is exactly what the Callaway ammo is designed to do in the barrel length it is designed to do it in. All right, that was very good. But next up, let's go down to an eight inch barrel. And for our eight inch gun, we have the GQ Armory Paladin in 8.6 Blackout. If you're not familiar with the Paladin series, these are extremely well equipped rifles from GQ Armory. They're also very lightweight and the eight inch Paladin in 8.6 weighs in at only five pounds, 12 ounces. Basically every detail has been looked at to make these the lightest and most reliable AR-10s that can be made. They have ambi controls, Huge flared magwell and they're available with carbon fiber or an aluminum handguard all around an awesome ar-10 this will be interesting because i know a lot of people want to know if 86 ammo loaded for a 12 inch gun can cycle an 8 inch semi-auto so here we go all right so that was pretty interesting didn't lose quite as much velocity as i thought at 997.3 with a standard deviation of 7.1 the 8-inch Paladin has been perfectly reliable with the Callaway Ballistics 8.6 Blackout ammo and we can change suppressors out, essentially changing the back pressure in the system, small adjustment to the gas block, and you can run shorter suppressors that give you less blowback and again still have perfect function. Lastly, a very common question is, will 8.6 ammo loaded for a 12-inch rifle go supersonic in my 16-inch rifle? And for our 16 inch rifle, we have a Ruger American. That's right, a Ruger American. That I sent off to Moztech to have a custom barrel made in 8.6 Blackout and rebarreled. If you want to get into shooting 8.6 but can't drop a ton of cash, this is a great route to trying it out. Moztech can rebarrel a ton of different rifles in 8.6 or just about any other caliber. And while the first two guns we looked at are breathtakingly awesome, they are also breathtakingly expensive. This rifle, even with the custom barrel, comes in at less than half the price of either. Now I did get a Ruger American Hunter as a donor gun, so it can accept AICS magazines and comes with the Magpul Hunter stock, so it came with a few upgrades over a standard Ruger American. Now this led to some very surprising and what might be somewhat controversial results. We had an average speed of 979.9 feet per second with a standard deviation of 8.3. Typically, as barrel length gets longer, velocity gets higher. But if you've been keeping score, the velocity on this 16 inch barrel was even less than the eight inch by almost 20 feet per second. So naturally, when I have a problem, I turn to Instagram. I'm kind of kidding, but I was able to connect with many people in the community shooting Callaway Ballistics 8.6 Blackout through their 16 inch 8.6 Blackout firearms, various makes and models, and all confirmed that they were all comfortably subsonic. And for the record, the ones with AR-10 said that they did function fine. What this tells me is I believe we have reached the point of drag meaning the projectiles expelled all of its energy from the gunpowder somewhere around the 12 inch range and is now starting to decelerate in the barrel, something I have only ever experienced with 22 long rifle. This isn't necessarily a bad thing and the 16 inch Moztech barrel may very well be the most consistent and accurate barrel I've tested so far. More testing needs to be done, but I have shot it consistently out to 600 yards. The Callaway Ballistics 285 grain loading works well across all common barrel lengths and would appear to have reliable function in semi-autos across all barrel lengths as well. Standard deviations were also exceptional for off-the-shelf ammo, however velocity did start to slow in the 16 inch. 
This isn't really a problem, but it could be if the barrel got longer. However, I am unaware of anyone making an 8.6 barrel longer than 16 inches currently. I'm also sure if Callaway desired, they could make a loading faster in 16 inch barrels. I set out to see if you could use one loading across all the barrel lengths for 8.6 blackout, and I think that we found out with the Callaway loading we can. While I can't guarantee that you'll have those results with any other brands, it is at least some interesting information to have. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because as always, we have some really big reviews in the works that you won't want to miss. If you want to know what those reviews are way before they hit the YouTube channel, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter where you can see what's being reviewed in real time. And by the way, check the links in the description there. You can find some cool stuff that I found and the best deals on it. If you want to help support Alabama Arsenal, the absolute best way to do that is through Patreon. These videos can be surprisingly expensive to make, and every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. There is also Alabama Arsenal gear available right below the video if you want to go out and represent. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.